Well, folks, Westfield boys hockey in the state championship today. The Bombers knocked off Hudson on Tuesday night thanks to scrappy play, taking advantage of some really limited opportunities and spectacular goalkeeping from sophomore Nick Liberto. That got them to the finals today. They look to use that same recipe to win a state championship against Marblehead. And in the first period, it was scoreless until Nick Sibilia makes the steal. Gets into open space, shoots and scores. It was one zip bombers early on, getting out to the early lead, just like they would have wanted to do. But Marblehead would respond. Tyler Jeleno puts it on cage, and then Austin Haley able to find the back of the net, ties the game up at one apiece. Later in the first period, an absolutely spectacular pass from Matt Gagnon to Kyle Levery. Levery can't finish, but Connor Laraway able to clean it up. 2-1 Westfield takes the lead back. They would go to the second, the first intermission rather, with that 2-1 lead. But early on in the second, a power play as Nate Barnes ends up in the sin bin. And Ryan Dempsey with a great pass to Chris McLeod ties the game up at two goals apiece. Then, off the faceoff, just moments later, Ben Koopman fires it from way out, finds the back of the net, and it's 3-2 Marblehead. Another angle. Able to wrist it past Nick Liberto, and Marblehead takes their first lead of the ball game. Later in the second, loose in front again, and this time it's Jake Kulovich that finds the back of that. Those three goals came within about two and a half minutes of one another. All of a sudden, Marblehead up 4-2, and then a couple minutes later, Kulovich again makes it 5-2 Marblehead. But Westfield was not done. They would not go quietly. Matt Gagnon. First attempt gets stoned, but second time able to find the back of the net. It's 5-3 to three going into the third period. Westfield still very much alive in the D3 state finals. But in the third period, the headers would close the door. Hunter Graves off the great feed, makes one nice move, and gets it past Liberto at far post. 6-3 Marblehead at that point. They go on to win. Frustrating and disappointing loss for Westfield, but they had one heck of a season despite the emotions afterwards. When you give up, uh, you give up a couple quick goals. That, that really hurts. It really hurts. It changed the momentum, and uh, uh, this was history. That's gonna stink. You know, you're not seeing the same kids anymore. You know, the leaders we have. You know, everybody. It just, it's frustrating. It's emotional. It's just gonna be a tough time. You know, next year we gotta come back and move on. You know, it's gonna be hard without the same people, but. That's life, and it's going to keep going. I mean, it's tough, but we've worked our butts off all year long. I mean, our goal is to make it here from the beginning. Uh, I mean, taking down Long Meadow and then Hudson, those were two big wins. I mean, a better team just won today. We played with our hearts, and we gave it everything we had, but, I mean, they are just better than us today. They were better, but not by much, folks. Westfield with one heck of a 2010-2011 season, and they'll be back next season. Certainly will be in the conversation a year from now. Sticking with hockey now to the Boston Bruins and after the loss last night in Toronto, the doubters are getting louder and louder. Now the conversation sent around, centers around two people, head coach Claude Julian and team captain Zdeno Charo. The argument now is that if the Bruins flop in the playoffs, Julian is squeezed tomatoes and now even some are wondering if the head coach should rob Chara of his captainship to shake things up a little bit. That isn't likely to happen, but all things seem to be on the table now as the Bruins who are 1-3-3 and in their last seven games, they've fallen and back into third place in the Eastern Conference and they're poised to play their division rival and nemesis the Montreal Canadiens in the first round of the playoffs, a matchup that many are starting to believe does not favor the Bruins. Now to the NCAA tournament brackets being crumpled up all over the country today. Many that advanced those top seeds without a second thought got a little bit of a scare. Second seed in North Carolina taking on number seven seed Washington late in this one. Final 30 seconds and a big three pointer here from Scott Suggs makes it a one point game. Now fast forward half a second left on the clock. Last chance to tie the game. Isaiah Thomas got it off but couldn't find the bottom. It's a little bit of controversy that maybe the uh, North Carolina player had blocked it before it got down, but UNC with the win by three. UNC's rival, the Duke Blue Devils, taking on Michigan rematch of the 1992 NCAA championship and a late three here from Tim Hardaway Jr. All of a sudden, it's a one-point game. Last chance for Michigan off the missed free throw from Nolan Smith. It's Darius Morris bringing the ball up the court. Gets a good look. Oh, but he can't find the bottom. Duke escapes against the eight seed. They move on to the Sweet 16. And last night, UConn looking to advance past Cincinnati and move themselves into the Sweet 16. And it was the Campbell Walker Show, folks. 
33 points on 8 of 20 shooting, 3 of 9 from 3 point range, and UConn knocks off Cincinnati, their biggies brethren, and moves on to the Sweet 16. You can catch it all on our website, WGGB.com, or on Twitter or Facebook at WGGB. So, tough loss for Westfield, but uh, they had one heck of a season to get where they did to get to the state championship, and it's a young team, so they should be back next year. And they, Marblehead's a tough team to beat. Absolutely. Very, very talented team that really gave them a lot of fits there in the second period, but again, Westfield's a young team, so next year could definitely be their year. Could be a different turnout. We hope we'll keep our fingers crossed for them and keep our fingers crossed our morning commute isn't so bad. Yes, yeah, uh, I think it's going to be towards the end of the morning commute. He called the uh, the penalty box the sin bin. I like that. Yes. <laughs> I, I think I belong in the sin bin for forecasting so much snow for the first yeah, week of spring. Beautiful. Tomorrow morning, a coating to two inches for most, ending by midday, changing over to rain by midday tomorrow. All right, yes. thank you and thank you all for joining us. We'll be back again at 10 on Fox 6 and right back here on ABC 40 at 11. Until then, have a great day.